I think the first thing when I think of Coach Harvey that comes to mind is legend. It's too easy! It's too easy! Absolute legend. Come on, Ruff! Come on! There were three fouls there! Coach Harvey's the man. I mean, he is Oklahoma City University Athletics. No, don't come back. Fernando, Fernando! Hi, 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 We've got to work now, we've got to work. Anywhere I go, when people find out that I, that I coach at OCU, the first thing is, do you, do you know Brian Harvey? So he's kind of a legend out there. Tug, tug, tug! Play! Get in there and open! Get in there and open! Don't jump! Get there! I had an older brother and uh, we didn't, there was very little to do. We didn't have a TV. We were, we were children born right after the Second World War. And England was pretty, it was a pretty depressed country. And uh, so we would go outside in the evenings and play football in, in the street. There's two teams in the city where I was born. One is called Liverpool Football Club, which are extremely famous and the other was Everton Football Club. My father was an Evertonian, so obviously he would take us to the games and watch Everton, and he would place us in an area called the Boys' Pen, to where all these little boys would sit and watch the game, and then he'd pick us up after the game. He would go into another main stand. So that was the beginning, and then we would come home and we would try to emulate the stars of Everton Football Club that, that we'd seen that Saturday afternoon. I, I ended up with a club called uh, Chester Football Club and was going to college at the same time as in Chester with Chester Football Club. Things were, were going along okay and um, a player called David Moorcroft, who was a friend of mine, he said, hey, you know, with it, there's a guy coming over from America and he's interested in signing young players, would you be interested? So I went along and I heard what he had to say and, and then I said definitely I would go to the training camp. So I ended up in the training camp it, and then I realized that a lot of these guys had answered the, the call in the newspaper and uh, with the likes of uh, a lot of Dutch boys and, and Norwegian guys, Scandinavian guys and uh, it, it was interesting because all types of nationalities were coming through this camp. And at the time, we, we met uh, Lamar Hunt, who was, at that stage, was the richest, one of the richest men in the world. And he owned the Kansas City Chiefs and also just moved the Kansas City Chiefs out of Dallas to Kansas. So it was, he was a very interesting man. And then I ended up with the Dallas Tornadoes, and then we embarked on this, this world tour, which was quite an adventure. It was kind of like those people who go off on the ship around the world and it's a, it's a collegiate thing. Well, this was, it was very similar, actually. Different cultures, different languages, different foods. It was, it was absolutely marvelous trip. The tour itself was, was, was it was a real eye-opener. We were in such places as Burma. We were in uh, Vietnam at the, at the height of the war. And six days after we left, we were in the embassy with, uh, who then, I believe, the ambassador was Cabot Lodge. And we, were, we went to a reception. And six days after that reception, the Viet Cong overran the American embassy. So it was very, tumultuous times, but I, I remember Pakistan and, uh, and India, Ceylon, which is now Sri Lanka, and it was just 
absolutely incredible the crowds we had at the game 50 60,000 people um, and just just the the difference in culture we arrived in Dallas in in February the season opened in March I found Texas unbelievable it was it was everything was bigger everything was I mean coming from England post-war England and coming to America, it was as though everything was in technicolor. Everything was in color. If England was black and white, America was technicolor. Our opening game was against the Houston Stars, and it was then played in the, what they call the eighth wonder of the world, the Astrodome. It was my first experience with AstroTurf, and it was quite funny because I, I ended up I ended up getting concussion, which today you would not have played for for three weeks. But at half time, right before half time, I got knocked out, and anyway, there were no subs in those days, so water was thrown, the magic sponge was placed on my neck, and, and I arrived in the second half. I was ushered out onto the field, but it was. Uh, it was, it was a great experience. I ended up being a player coach in Hong Kong, which uh, it, it kind of pulls you in both directions. So it's very difficult to, to devote enough time to be a player, devote enough time to be a coach. Yeah, I was done after Hong Kong. Seven years. Yeah, seven years in Hong Kong. I ended up returning back to Dallas after about two years of living and coaching and doing all that good stuff in Dallas. I, I got an offer to come to Oklahoma City to coach a pro team here. It was called the Oklahoma City Slickers. The fresh face, you know, he felt no pressure. He came on. And that was in 81 is when I came up here. We made it to the championship, but got beat. Uh, in the Silverdome, biggest crowd ever in the ASL. In front of 40,000 people, in fact, in the championship game. But it was a great experience. And then they kicked on for about another year or so. And then, when oil, when the price of oil fell to $11 a barrel, that's when the owner decided it was time to let the soccer team go. And then in I worked for Coca-Cola as a youth market manager for quite a while, and one of our accounts was, was OCU. And uh, one day when I was making a call, the then athletic director, who was a very nice man, Arnold Short, he said, do, do you know anything about soccer? So I said, well, I think I know a little. So we went, and he showed me an area, uh, and he asked, did I believe it? Could it, we put a soccer field in there? I said, I think we'd have to eat into the car park a little bit, but we did, and eventually that was 1985. I was on I-35 using all of my contacts in Dallas to try and bring a team up to put onto the field in 1986. I believe he heard the accent, actually. <laughs> he just rolled the dice and thought, you know, well, maybe this guy knows something. And that game, September 6th, against Our Lady of the Lake, came 29 years to the day after OCU debuted its program and got its first win. So tell us what you remember about that first win of the program. Well, it was, it was a lot different than on Saturday. It was a cooler day, and uh, we played on the old, uh, where the Freedy Center now stands. It was a good win, and we, it kicked off our season. We went 8-6 and six that year, so it was a good start. And look back on those 29 years with the program, what memories stick out to you in that span? Well, I, I've, you've got to think about the national tournaments, the ladies going to the final in 2000 and getting beat in the final game, um, the boys making it to the semifinals in Boca Raton. It was a quite a difficult time. It's, it, it's very difficult to let go. Uh, it's, it's something that every day you've gone to the locker room, every day you're out practicing and and then there was a goal. There was, 
it was Monday through Friday to achieve a goal on a Saturday or a Sunday. And it was a collective goal and we'd all work very hard towards it. And just the camaraderie of teammates in the locker room and, and the preseason planning. It, I think it's the only profession where you can have a bad year or a bad season and then really forget that season that was behind you and really look forward and pull together as a group of people to achieve something the next year. So as bad as last year was, if, if you had a bad year, there was always that optimism that you could achieve something the following year. So that part of it was very, very difficult to let go. He's a good man, and that means a lot more to me than whatever he did coaching or playing. I learned so much from him. He's extremely intelligent, but you can tell that he just wants you to love the game as much as he does. Every kid who has played soccer in the state of Oklahoma now or in the last 30 years owes Brian Harvey a debt of gratitude because Brian Harvey introduced the state of Oklahoma to the world of soccer. Lifelong friendships developed from the game. The game gave me the most joy in my life, gave me sad moments as well. But it was, it was Joga Bonita, the beautiful game. And it was something that always I wanted to, to be and something that I wanted to be around. It's been great. I've had that wonderful opportunity to go down memory lane. <laughs> In the middle of the game, this huge tumbleweed just rolls down the middle of the field, just the full length of the pitch. And he just taps his assistant and says, you know, I played against Pele once. <laughs> <laughs>